I think the ground is uh, set to invite our today's uh, guest speaker. Lexo Alexishvili will be answering our questions. He is uh, well in position to cover all the directions that we have highlighted so far in the checkpoints. For those who are not familiar, Lexo is former finance minister of Georgia and currently is the founder and managing partner of PMC Georgia. Yes, a very renowned organization indeed, involved in many directions of consultancy and research. In uh, 2018, for example, PMCG was one of the leading consultancy companies as measured by revenues. 9,959,000 um, Georgian lari was its revenue in a single year, out of which almost 3 million lari was net profit at PMC MCG also thinks of expanding its areas of consultancy, adding justice and security and education to its already diverse menu of advice. Lexo Alexishvili joins us at the checkpoints. Lexo, welcome to the um, checkpoints and thank you for your time in the, in the first place. Uh, thank you, my pleasure. Yeah, uh, we had a big ex exclusive today, thanks to uh, mm. Georgi, I'm uh, really happy, um, in the checkpoints. and. Uh, the, the main thing that we see, along many other things, uh, is that there is a tendency of miscommunication between the business community and the government. And this is quite a peculiar uh, thing in these days, because what we heard uh, from the business community when Georgian Dream was coming to the power was especially the emphasis on a very good communication between business and the government. What is your uh, take on that and what are some of the reasons behind this tendency? Thank you very much for the invitation and also congratulations. It's a really very great pleasure to be one of the first guests uh, in this uh, quite interesting endeavor. Because uh, yeah, that uh, seems like you are uh, going beyond uh, like Georgian environment and becoming Correct. more and more global, which is a very important one. So congratulations. So regarding this business and government communication which is very important and uh, it's, uh, it's obvious that uh, uh, time to time we always have some problems this is not if we look at this situation this is kind of you know to, 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 not, not, not straightforward and um, it's really very difficult to to realize what is the real problem behind of it because sometimes that's really very urgent and uh, un unpredictable um, uh, uh, reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes uh, that might be absolutely um, uh, institu mi missing of institutional issues. Mm -hmm. This particular case that we are just you know, talking about, which uh, was just recently raised uh, in with the, within the, the communication sector, also shows that there's some, something is missing there, right? So. And we um, had the same yeah. proceedings with the uh, healthcare sector not long ago. Yeah, yeah, probably there are many others as well which are not so much noisy and they mm. know that Correct. went through quite you know smooth and quiet mode, right? So in this particular case, I think uh, what is missing is also some institutional framework which is needed to set up more um, or transparent and open procedure for adoption of uh, this uh, uh, legislation and amendments in the legislation. So we have uh, been talking about um, regulatory impact assessments a long time already, but you know it is uh, still missing and it is not um, not uh, enforced uh, literally. What we are following is that businesses are requesting only predictability. They are mm -hmm. only requesting uh, tobacco companies are requesting mm -hmm. yes. give us just an excise taxation plan. Communication yeah. request, we are ready for these regulations, but let us talk preliminary and yeah. discuss. Same in the healthcare sector, what Arena has mentioned. Do you see mm -hmm. something else, how we can like fix this problem, because uh, then we will sit in 2022 again, and yes. we will we'll, we'll be thinking, and uh, myself or Elena will be asking you, what is the motivation of government? What I'm saying is that there are two uh, main pillars to, to address this issue. One is uh, uh, political commitment and commitment coming from the government saying that okay we will communicate with the businesses and whatever businesses uh, are concerned with we will just you know talk uh, with them and then we will solve this issue. Or if we are having some new ideas we will just you know communicate with them first and then we will mm -hmm. just you know decide. We see that even in, in this government there are some personalities 
dealing with that much better and there are some personalities not, not dealing with that uh, at all right oh. so that's sh and, and be, because of that I need I think that we need to go beyond that uh, personality issue and to somehow uh, somehow create some institutional framework for that. And the checkpoints that handed uh, PMC's research uh, and we see that even after five or so years um, uh, the CFTA isn't bringing the results we could have anticipated, right? Uh, um, China is doing better. We are um, starting from a very low basis, uh, uh, so to say. Uh, what's wrong there? First is that there is nothing wrong with uh, uh, EU Georgia trade uh, uh, volumes which we have right now. I mean that is um, natural. But for Georgian businesses to enter European European market, in this case, much uh, bigger effort is needed for that. So, mm -hmm. and what is the solution in this case? Uh, again, the solution is that we need to attract foreign direct investments from the European Union to increase the trade with the European Union. Because Do you consider in general, not a part of your uh, next survey, which was just published two days ago, that uh, the problem what we have with FDI and in general, like uh, in the big picture, is that we are not oriented on uh, mega projects. The only idea what we had was Anaclia, which was uh, quite damaged. I'm not talking about an act there right now, I'm mm -hmm. talking about mega project. We yes. could consider it be another, another boost yes. for the Georgian economy. Uh, absolutely, I agree with you, but um, we need to also consider that these mega projects are more also kind of riskier. Mm -hmm. If there is the, uh, the, from the investors there are some requests, when the private investor is coming, and they request sovereign guarantee, mm -hmm. and they are asking for this sovereign guarantee, mm -hmm. then always there is the huge question. Uh, what happens if something happens then, right? So, and then usually this sovereign guarantee becomes the huge debt. Since Georgi is not mentioning, I have been waiting for him, yeah. but he's not no, mentioning. No, no, no. So um, uh, he was uh, um, uh, he was uh, moderating uh, a very I interesting um, discussion panel by Galton Cabert, oh, okay. uh, um, and we will be having a teaser, um, and then we will get back to it in, in the next uh, program more broadly. But uh, uh, two things that caught my ear um, uh, during that uh -huh. those uh, uh, discussions uh, from all, all the oh, participants. Yeah. yeah. First is um, you mentioned several times FDI. Mm -hmm. uh, what I hear, especially from the government representatives, is more, um, uh, so to say, um, um, uh, more uh, local production, uh, more of um, agricultural development, more of uh, dealing with imports. Mm, that's first point, and I want to know what is your uh, take on that. And another point is this uh, diversification from tourism. Diversification within tourism, uh, I'm all for it, but I don't understand what is diversification from tourism uh, sector. And Mercedes Se Ver Mero Vertin, service oriented. Of course, but Mercedes. but it was uh, it was Would very you? notable from Mercedes uh, Vera yes. Martin because she. Um, sort of she said, quote. yes, it is. It is very favorite quote because she was the only one who mentioned that now you are talking uh, within COVID-19 um, context, but when the economy opens, when this is over, tourism will come back. Oh, well, very, very interesting points. Um, uh, again, we, um, we need to look at that uh, from um, uh, two different perspectives. One is the FDI um, uh, policy, how we are um, attracting this FDI and what is missing to attract FDI, uh, how we can uh, increase the volume of FDI from, uh, from uh, various countries, not, not also to diversify this, uh, the, the, uh, the sources of uh, FDI from different countries. And the second one is the sector-wise policy. I mean, in this case, uh, regarding, I mean, we need to again start with this like georgia is a small country and we cannot rely on one or another sector we need to have as diversified as open economy as possible we need to have a um, uh, business friendly and reliable environment 
and we need to keep this environment as much as possible to attract foreign direct investments. And we have to use these free trade agreements with our partners to attract these foreign direct investments further. We need to continue uh, working with our new partners about free trade agreements, uh, which are in the list uh, like uh, India, India or Israel or, well, we don't know, but maybe even USA for a long time. Yes. So we need to continue this path for sure.